Macro photography is taking pictures of tiny things. A problem is that the focus plane is very thin. A process called stacking allows us to combine many photos to get a detailed result. This video shows how to build an automated focusing rail for taking the source photos and demonstrates how to use it. Hello, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to talk about extreme macro photography. So I'm going to talk about the challenges, the equipment, and give a demo at the end. Let's get started with equipment. So you'll need a camera. Any camera from the last 15 years that takes interchangeable lenses will probably be fine. You'll also need a lens. You can buy specialized lenses for this task, or you can get a regular lens and put a close-up adapter. This one costs about 80. Or you can do an extension tube on a regular lens, or you can get a special adapter that allows you to mount a lens backwards. You'll also probably want a tripod, some kind of way to keep the camera steady. A tripod is a normal choice. A very nice to have is a rail. So a rail lets you turn this forward and backwards to move the camera forward and backwards in very precise increments. So that's how we're going to get our different distances. And then a really, really nice to have, which we're going to talk about in this video, is a automatic rail. So what this does is it can move the camera forward and backward automatically. So here I can do it. So I'm just moving the camera. And then it can also take pictures. And I can take a picture from here. And then the final thing it can do is it can combine those steps automatically. So you can pick a starting point, an ending point, and steps in between. And it will run the whole thing. Take a picture, move the camera, take a picture, move the camera. So you'll get a really nice set of pictures to put into your stacking program. This video is two parts. The first part, I'm going to explain how to build one of these things. And then the second part, I'm going to go through a demo of how to use this thing, which is also applicable to other of these or manual. Because you can actually buy these. I know of two of them, which I'll put links to in the comments. So if you don't want to build this thing and just want to do the photography, you can skip to the second chapter and just watch that one. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now I'm going to give a brief overview of how to build the automated rail. Note there's a lot of details about the build that I'm not going to cover in this video because I did a detailed write-up that I have a link to in the description that you can refer to if you want to build this. So moving on, we need to interface the stepper motor to our manual focusing rail. And I'm using an NM200S focusing rail. So if you're using that, or I believe the 180 model, you can probably just use the STL files that I have in that description link. If not, there's this free software called OpenSCAD that you can use to modify this. So OpenSCAD is a programming language based modeler, but you don't have to learn it in order to change this rail. All you have to do is go to the variables that I created that give the width and the height of your rail and change those to whatever rail you have. And then the same is true for the knob. You can change the size and properties of the knob in a similar way. All right, so we got the motor bracket all printed out. I printed it with supports. I'll take those off and stick it on the motor and then I will show you how it fits onto the rail. Here's a quick look at the printed part with the motor mounted on it. So the motor mounts with just these four screws here. And here I have the macro rail. So then this just slides in like this. And then you just have to turn this so that it fits in there. Which, there we go. And then you just tighten up these screws here and that will clamp on. And now the motor, when the motor turns, it will move the rail forward and backwards. It's just as simple as that. Now I'm going to talk about the electronics a little bit. I know that not everybody's here for the electronics, so we'll keep it brief. And this design's pretty simple anyway. So here is a picture of the actual device. So when we look at the schematic, I can also point out the real things. So let's open up the schematic and make it so we can see them side by side. Here we go. Okay, first we have a Raspberry Pi Pico, which you can see here in the picture and here. So this is the brains of the operation. We have the uh, motor driver here. 
So the Pico itself does not have enough power on its pins to drive a motor. So we use one of these motor drivers here instead. And this is the motor driver in the pin diagram. And then we have four buttons here for going next, previous, reset, and shutter. Up here we have a shutter release. Um, that's for making the camera trigger. Up here we have power. This is the power. So basically this will be powered from a 12 to 30 volt source. But these guys can only handle up at about 5.5 volts. So this here will downstep that voltage. Then this is the OLED, just pins for it right here. And then we have pins for the gimbal here. So here you can see the pins for the gimbal actually connected to the gimbal. The only other part that might be interesting to look at is the PCB. So if you click here, you can see the PCB, which you saw in real life over there. And you can see how I laid everything out and did the wiring. Okay, so here's the back side of the PCB that I cut out with the CNC machine. If you're interested in learning more about how to cut things out on CNC machines like this, I actually created a dedicated video that goes over step by step how to do this. So here it is from a little further away. There's the machine. And what the machine did is it cut out the board itself, drilled holes where they're supposed to be, and created the backside traces. You know, just because I used a CNC doesn't mean that it's required, of course. You could probably do this with a perf board given the number of wires or if you wanted to go deluxe of course you could order up a board so here we have the put together and assembled board and at this point the electronics is done I just need to make a case for all this stuff to enclose it all so we can turn on the power here and we can move things forward and backwards And here's a quick look at the controller, which is also rendered in OpenSCAD. Again, there's a file that you can go through and change around different numbers if you want the dimensions to be a little different. So let's go ahead and make this thing. Okay, so the print for the case recently finished. It took about six hours. And you can see the inside. There's a bunch of um, holes to put brass inserts. Um, this is for the board, and this is for the gimbal. And then we have some holes for various ports and power and things like that. Okay, I got the case prepped for the board. I put in all the brass inserts, and they all went in nice. And then I added an XT60 connector here for power. I'll be using batteries like this to power it. Of course, you can power it any way you want. And then to trigger the camera, I got a 2.5 millimeter socket. So as you can see, we got the cover cut out on the CNC machine. So now I'm just going to take this off, finish it up, and bolt the whole thing together. Okay, so here I'm going to give a quick demo of how to use this thing in a real-world situation. This can't be a comprehensive tutorial because that would be a very long video. So we'll just go through the basics here. So I have a subject. For my subject, I'm going to pick a blueberry and I have it propped up a bit for a good angle. And then I have a light source. Putting in light from the side is usually a good starting point because you get the textures kind of come out. So I'm using a Pentax K1. Any camera with interchangeable lenses can be made to work. And in this case, I got a macro lens with a close-up adapter on there. And again, there's many ways to do this at various price points. You can actually start quite cheaply with a close-up adapter and a cheap long lens. And of course I have the device that we've been constructing and it will be powered by this LiPo battery which I have in a LiPo safe bag. And then I have a remote trigger. Okay, we're ready to begin. I'll turn the camera on. Good settings are base ISO. I'm gonna go with F8, anything F8 through F16 should be fine. We'll figure out the shutter speed in a minute and I'm gonna shoot in raw. And for white balance, I would like to pick a fixed setting, daylight. Otherwise, the white balance might move around from shot to shot. So let's go into live view mode. And let's brighten up that exposure until it looks about right. Let's turn the exposure down a little bit to avoid that blown highlight there. There we go. So we can use this to drive forward and back. And I have focus peaking on the display. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little white line there. 
So I'm going to drive it to the back of the image here. Actually, I'll probably drive it to the middle just for a test picture. So we can push the shutter button for a test picture. And I would say that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look. Exposure looks good, as you can see from the histogram. And we'll take a quick look at detail. And yes, on the very thin depth of field band, the detail is good. Okay, so let's drive it forward until we get to the edge. We don't really need to go to the back of the blueberry, but about right there is probably fine. Okay, then we'll set our start position. So I'm pulling back into the image till we get to the front there and maybe even a little beyond the front. Okay, there we go. And then for our delay, let's see, we're taking 0.3 seconds. Um, I wanna give it some time to write to the card as well. So I'll just say one second is probably okay. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna go 6.7 millimeters. Uh, 0.2 is fine to start. So that's gonna be 34 images. So while these images take, I'll probably just speed through it so that we can not have to watch it take images for all that time. But um, just hit start to go. And you can see it taking all the pictures. It's done. Okay, so I have all of the images loaded onto my computer in a program called Darktable. Darktable is a free and open source alternative to Lightroom. I use Lightroom for about 12 years or so and then just got tired of paying the subscription. And I think Darktable is just as capable of a program once you get past the initial learning curve. So here's all the blueberries so we can take a look at up close and as I scroll through them you can actually see the focus point moving through the image. So this is the one that we took together and this is one of the ones I took afterwards. So what we're going to do is combine all of these stacks of images into single images. To start we'll just play with exposure and color a little bit in dark table. I don't want to spend too much time on this part because it's kind of a separate topic. We can start by looking at white balance a bit, see if I want to make the white balance a little bit better. Okay, and maybe add a little bit of color. Standard. It looks fine. You don't want to do any sharpening or anything just yet. That probably after the stacking program is done would be the best time for that. One more thing, exposure. Let's try giving a little more. Okay. I would say that's pretty good. We started here and now we're here. Small change, but I think it looks pretty good overall. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll copy this, control C, and I'm going to just paste it to all the other images. Control V. Okay. Now we have them all set with those same parameters. Isn't it neat that a free program can do this? So now I'm going to take all of these and export them as a TIFF. I should mention that if you shot as JPEG, you'd be able to skip all this stuff. But you'll be have a less data-rich files to work with so it's a trade-off all right so I have a preset here for helicon which is the program I'm going to be using and I'll export these as tiffs all right so let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> export is down here so we're exporting our 34 images all right that's done helicon focus the program I'm going to be using which has a free trial um, I'll also present some free options later. If you want to buy it, I think the pricing is reasonable and it's a one-time purchase as well. All right, so what we do is we open images 
and then here's all the images I just exported open they're all right here and I'm just gonna take all the default options go And there we go. There's a bunch of tools in here for retouching and things like that if you have some nasty areas in your image. That could happen if you have, for example, something that's always out of focus or sometimes along the edges, you, there's retouching tools. But I think in this case, they're not really needed. So we'll just go ahead and save. And I'll give it a better name. I'll call it Stacked Blueberry. Okay, so now I'll go back to Darktable and we can edit this. So we say add to library and we find that image. And it should be at the bottom there, right there. Add. Okay, here it is. Now we can play with it some more. So as you can see up close, it looks really good. So we could try popping up the exposure just a touch. And then maybe add in a little bit of local contrast. Yeah, I think that looks good. For cropping, hmm. There we go. Try to balance the lights and the darks and get the that in the right spot. I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay. Anyway, I could screw with this thing for a long time, but that is the result. So now I'll do the other one. I'll probably go through it, but speed through it because it's basically all the same steps. And we can take a look at that one. All right. So there's yet another example. So yeah, that's all there really is to it. For those of you that would like a completely free stacking solution I'll point you in the direction of this focus stack command line software like I said you can download it for free there's a zip version for Windows the directions are here but it's fairly straightforward to use so here I have all of the images that I exported from Darktable so all you have to do is type focus stack star tiff and that will pick up all of these and stack them. So I'm just running it. And it's done. So we can take a look at that. And that's the job it did. So another option for you. All right, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned something. If so, think about the old thumbs up. Also note that I have a number of other videos where I do a bunch of other projects, a lot of 3D printing, CNC machines, a little bit of RC. If things like that interest you, feel free to check out those videos and have a great day.